Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. in the studio, I'm very excited. I had a really productive day yesterday, you would have seen it already, but I designed stickers for my new next door drop. It's one of those times where things feel a little bit different and the style's a little bit different, but it's exciting because I'm like pumped about it. I go through a lot of visual changes, like the themes in my work and like the subject matter stay similar, but the style seems to change over time. Like if you look at the last 10 years of my work, like. It's gone through some changes. The colors reminded me a little bit of like Miffy or something. Sydney has just gone into lockdown, so it's like interesting because it just feels like secret time, I guess. Like I had a shoot with Adobe that was supposed to happen on the 5th of July, but that's gonna have to be pushed back. They're coming into the studio to film stuff. It's always weird when someone else is filming because I'm like, but what if they make me look like an idiot? Or what if I say stupid shit? <sighs> but I'm so happy you guys like the moving vlog and I'm touched that you guys felt so emotional with moving out of the warehouse and stuff because I was really emotional like I didn't show this but I had cried a lot of times whether it be just like taking down my books and it being so sad and empty or like going through like boxes of old sentimental stuff and then just like I actually had like a massive breakdown because I was like <laughs> We don't have enough time, Rocket. We don't have enough memories. We don't create enough memories. We don't have a paper trail of our lives together. When I grow old and one of us dies, we're not gonna have the memories and we'll forget. Like, I was like so upset. And then we went out and bought like a photo album. I think it was just like really emotionally draining for me as someone that's like super sentimental and like someone that puts a lot of like emotional attachment into items and like belongings. Even like scraps of paper. I'm like, but this receipt's from Disneyland where we're in Tokyo. <laughs> I'm on a tangent, but start a new studio vlog. Today I'll be finishing off my thank you cards and then I'll send that off to Chris and then I think I'm doing, what is it? Then I need to do an email and I'm gonna sketch some new phone backgrounds. So those should be fun. This is like low pressure stuff that I can like begin with so that when I finally get momentum, I'm like ready to go for the stuff that's a little bit more difficult, you know? That's it. I will see you in a second, in one second. <laughs> Super, super big amount of stuff done yesterday, but I did like do a background. I need to adjust it because I checked it on my phone and it's not quite right. I'm going to show you. So this is what the background looks like right now. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just too big. So I want to shrink it down. I think it's just too busy with, oh my God. I think it's just too busy with apps. Oh my gosh, can you not? Oh, I've done that. The rain is pouring, I'll drive out to the Cause I can't ignore it there I'll get there by morning Give my heart a warning Cause I can't ignore it there That I should probably let you go But I still need to let you know That I think the world of you Oh, oh. I should probably let you go But I still need to let you know That I think the world of you Oh, oh. I got Got some stuff for you, Tonks, not that you care. I have a candle in my studio that smells like watermelon, which I love. As Rocket said, 
I should get this watermelon flavored tofu kitty litter. Cause you use tofu kitty litter, but this one smells like watermelon. Tonky smell. Okay. Yes, yes, I have things for you, hold on. Boot like Mickey. Look. <gasps> Ready? Get him, Tonks. Cutie. Tonky, that's not for you, gorgeous. God, are you too big for this one too, you chunky boy? You're five kilos and you're only one years old. Oh, 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 oh. Don't
supposed to do this? I feel like, how are you supposed to recycle a box this large? Oh. I'm so excited, my dream cow. Yes. Color is so cute. How does it feel? You want to come sit? Yesterday I did a painting that makes me feel so good. Look how cute. I made, already made a TikTok about it. I can't help myself with TikTok. It's just so easy that I'm just like, I share it straight away. I'm really excited. I really love it. But what I've noticed is that I think I need to darken this line because it's not as contrasted as I want. So I'm just going to do that today. Just like do a thin wash. And then this will be another print of my store for my next store update. It's really nice when things just like come out of you. You know, I'm like in a mountain obsessed phase right now. So you're just gonna have to put up with it for a little while till I get it all out of my system. And then we can move on to normal life. I need to edit my video. I need to clean up and I need to go over some emails, client emails, stuff, and change some things. Okay, that's that's just, I don't wanna think about that right now. So we'll just toss it away. Let's do the painting first. Have a good start today. I just had a sandwich. It was so amazing and some yogurt and it was awesome. And now I'm gonna have a good day. Awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> like Joey's computer, there's a sign, he's just like, why is she stop talking? It's like with Tonka when you're like, you're like, he's in the kitchen. Why is he so quiet stealing food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really rare for Shah to be quiet for more than five seconds. Unless I'm asleep, but even then sometimes I'm <laughs> Anyway, so let's have a good day. I'm really excited and yippee. So I'm prepping to pack some of the sticker stuff. This is the order I want to pack them in. So I've tried to put them in boom, 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 and then put it on this and slip it into a cello sleeve. And hopefully it's quick. I mean, it's a little bit laborious, but I love how it looks as a pack. So I'm very excited to do this. I hope you guys like this video, the very first studio vlog in the new studio that wasn't a moving vlog. And yeah, we're gonna do some Q and A's. We had, I, I asked in my community tab if you guys had any burning questions for me to answer and you all always come through with like hundreds of questions. So I'm gonna answer quite a few today because I hate like leaving things unanswered. So before we do that, I wanna say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. As per usual, if you guys need a website, Squarespace is so easy to use. I remember the first time I ever used it was to create a catalog for my second show, Prickly, and I probably created it a couple nights before the actual show launched so that people could see 
all the works I had available. Even if you don't have designs because you're able to make a really beautiful website because they have templates. What I love about Squarespace is the templates are created for Squarespace. Like it's by people that work at Squarespace. It's not like you're downloading kind of dodgy themes that may be buggy and may not work. Like they're tested and they're really, really good. I've used the same thing for five years. I effing love it. What that says to me is that you don't need to waste time changing your website every year if you don't want to. If you want to, easy, it's a click of a button. But if you don't want to, you can keep the same site and it looks beautiful five years later, which in my opinion, I think my site is very cute five years later. If you haven't tried Squarespace and you want to, go to squarespace.com slash for a little peach, you get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Yay! Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do some questions now. And I have quite a few. There's a few that will include Rocket as well, but for now we'll just do a few for me. I'm sure you've answered this before, but what are your opinions slash policies about getting your work tattooed? I would love to get your little angry marshmallow on a stick tattooed, but I want to be respectful about it and ask if I can before I decide to go or willy nilly and do it. First of all, thank you for asking permission. It's really, really nice. I'm really fine with anyone getting my work tattooed. I don't really do tattoo commissions, but if you want to get tattoos of works that I've already done, go for it. I've seen some really awesome ones. So I'm like so blessed to be able to be on someone's body forever. I feel like that's like a bond we'll always share. And I think it's crazy that people like love something so much that they will get something that I've made on them forever, essentially. I always go long story. I never go short story, but long story short, yes, you can totally get it. I don't require a fee or anything, but I do have tattoo tokens on my store, which are $50. That's like totally optional. If you want to, like just as a gesture, you totally can. It's totally a gestural thing but um, it's there if you want to support. If you don't, that's fine. I'm happy if you just buy stuff from my store or even if you just like support me by via consuming what I make online. It's really nice. Thank you to everyone who's gotten my work tattoo. so cute. I'd love an update on Little Tonka. Hmm. Okay, allow me. Home video compilation, go. My arms are tired from holding this up. Hi Sean, have you ever thought about pursuing a master's degree in illustration? I've been thinking about it, but as an illustrator, is it best to invest time and money on building a career instead? I don't know, but right now to me, a degree in illustration seems not to be as beneficial compared to other field of work, but I want to study abroad. Thank you. Hard to answer because I don't know you. I feel like some people work really well in institutional settings. Like some people find it difficult to be self-motivated with learning and stuff like that. I didn't have that issue um, and I didn't study illustration. I actually studied graphic design. Um, I studied art and design, but I majored in graphic design. I think that's a really good degree because it allows you to be really pivotal. I carved out this other space for myself. It just really depends what you want. If you want to be working at a company, it can be a really nice like, hey, look what I can do. But I know that the creative industry, FYI, is more concerned with your portfolio than your degree. I've never been asked for my degree. That doesn't mean that you will never be asked for it, but that's just my experience. I can only share what I've experienced. And I would say that from my experience, having um, the work experience, the portfolio and like the interpersonal skills to work with people, a more important experience than actually having a degree. Having said that, school can be a really good way to like double down on getting in a, getting like formal education and having a space to make work and having the resources to make work. On top of that, if you're not someone that finds it easy to network and finds it easy to reach out to other people, it can be a really easy way to just form your own little network of people that are interested in the same stuff as you and, and working in the same area as you. And connections like that can really help you in your career. To like long story short again, it really depends like what kind of illustration you wanna be doing. It depends what you want to be learning like I think it would be I think it, I would benefit from learning how to do character design and stuff like that because I just do what I do and I do what I think I should do I don't know if that's right or whatever but it is expensive and I don't know where you are if you're in America I don't know about that because like really expensive if you're in Australia it's like a little bit less expensive and you have like hex and all that stuff long story short again I can't answer that for you but that's my opinion and I hope that it's helped you clarify like what you want to do I think there's pros and cons to both but I think it is expensive to study and I don't know whether it's worth it because I've never studied illustration. How do you get your first job as a freelance and what do you do to keep them coming? Do you think that your self branding on social media affects that? But the first jobs I ever had, the first jobs I ever had were ones that I like reached out to people for. So like I reached out to like the manager of a band that I liked and got work there. I've, I talked about this before online. So if you really want like an in-depth 
look go to the five to nine podcast because i actually break down like how i started and how how reaching out to people really works or has really worked for me i got work that way i also got work for example on tumblr back in the day i like made friends with someone and then eventually they found someone that needed an illustrator and they they suggested that i that they go with me one of my first big brands i worked with which really was able to make my portfolio more convincing in the way that like a big brand had trusted me to do work for them and therefore other people can too so i would suggest one reaching out to the people you want to work with and like Try to be a bit self-aware and take consideration on where you are in your freelancing career. Are you very experienced? Can you offer a lot? And if you're not very experienced, maybe go for like smaller brands to kind of solidify your portfolio and make sure that people can trust the work that you're making on like a smaller scale so that you can then get those bigger jobs. I think it's a big leap to go from not having anything in your portfolio that is commercial and going to a large brand and be like, can I work for you? Although you should still do that, but also just contact the smaller brands just in case, you know what I mean? And then the other thing is making sure that you're surrounding yourself with a community of creative people and that doesn't need to be in real life it can be scary to network in real life online i'm so open with just being like that is awesome that's cool that's cool and if you like just tell people whose work you like that you like their work i think pretty quickly like you find out who has stuff in common with you who you can vibe with and like that kind of those kinds of connections can be really really useful but also really really supportive and like motivating and when you're in like your crappy times oh and the second part of the question is do you think that your self-branding on social media affects that yes is like a selling point That was horrifying. Cause like no one's ever in here, no one can get in here. We just hear footsteps. That was so scary, was it not? Yeah, I heard footsteps and I was like, no. I honestly thought we were about to get murdered because those kinds of footsteps that were just like, duh, 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 duh. Anyway, back to the second half of the question after feeling like I was about to die. Things just seem so different now. Um, do you think that your self-branding on social media affects that? Definitely. I feel like because my work is like quite an acquired taste, it can be like sickly sweet to some people that don't aren't really like invested in the entire universe of what I create. It can come off as like cutesy or simple when really like I want it to be like that. Like it's very intentional. So I think that having followers and stuff like that allows other brands and like potential clients and other people to see like this work resonates with some people and like people like it for a reason and it can be it can be uh marketable you know what i mean in, in the world of commercial illustration that's really really important if you're starting out as a freelancer i would definitely suggest trying to form a community online whether it be on instagram whether it be on tiktok whatever like find a space that you can really like dig your roots in i don't even know if that's a saying settle and try to create a community there because like those numbers can really really help you get jobs i know that when i'm like pitching my picture book ideas my commissioning editor wanted me to include my social stats just to get it across the line to show people that there is a potential customer base already there like they don't have to do as much work like it's very very helpful and i feel like i've spoken to some like illustrators that are a bit weary of doing that because they don't want it just to be social but like why not why not use what you have and what you've worked for to be able to get stuff across the line people are not going to give you book deals if they don't think that it will be like profitable for them like publishers are businesses you know what i mean okay baby do you want to come answer some questions for us sure i have some questions that i think rocket can answer too <sighs> hello everyone this is rocket okay so have you ever ex experienced relationship problems how do you handle such a healthy relationship with your partner i know it's personal but you guys get along so well obviously we have little problems of course like everyone does yeah we have our own little things yeah but i think we're just like really good friends yeah that's it we're only friends and also we've <laughs> we've able to we've able to like stay very goofy and playful playful so that just Help. that just means that like every little moment always has like uh -oh. a little edge of like fun and like goofiness which yeah. is really like i don't know that's, that just that just keeps it nice and fun yeah I would say like it's it, you're always going to have issues in a relationship just because it's two individuals growing separately but yeah. I think also we're very close and like that we do we're like quite attached I feel that's yeah. not what I recommend to people but I like it <laughs> like I like coming to the studio together I like working together I like living together I like all these things with you like I'm not sick yeah. of you I'm like surprised that after all this time like I'm not sick of so because like other people I'll get so. sick of within a day do you know what I mean yeah. But you, I haven't got sick of at all. We had more problems when we were younger, but that's also because I don't think we were working together as much. I think now when we have issues, 
the common thing that underlies the solution is that we want to work to have a solution for each other. Yeah, we're a unit, if that makes sense. Yeah. And we approach our relationship problems or we approach arguments or we approach like life problems or just like one of our issues together. Yeah. And I think that's really nice. It's true. But yeah, it really takes two people though. If you're in a relationship and you're doing all the work and the other person's not putting it any time and meeting you halfway, then that's not fair. And it's not going to work like this because we both really try and meet each other's needs, I think. Yeah, there's still just a lot of fun in us. Yeah. And I think that just is... I think that's I crazy know, for that's like... Really cause we've been like... We've had like a few goes at our relationship. So this is our third relationship. This one's like seven years. But in total, we've dated for 12 years. Mm. And it's still fun. It's still like every day is exciting. Like we can sit and do nothing. It'll still be fun, can't we? Yeah. We can go grocery shopping. It's still fun together. Yeah. Like boring crap is still fun together. And that's like... Makes me so excited because that means our life is going to be so fun together. Yeah. We're lucky, aren't we? We sure are. Will Tonka ever get a brother or sister? Possibly. Yeah. We constantly, like, we... Well, Honestly, like, very, like, within the first year of having Tonka, I'm like, I need another one. Like, I love this cat. And, like, when Rock, when Tonka's sleeping on Rock, and I'm like, what about me? <laughs> yeah. And, and like, also, like, he's home alone sometimes. And, like, I don't want him to be sad if he is. The only thing that I've actually thought about, though, is that he... Tonka is obsessed with food. And if we get another animal, and that animal isn't as obsessed with food, then... Tonk will eat all the food and that animal will get no food. <laughs> yeah, you work around that, but that's... How? Tough. But then we have to separate them, oh my gosh. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And also, Tonka doesn't really like other cats that much. Like, he likes dogs, but I can't have a dog right now because that's a whole other routine on top of the cat yeah, routine. That's, that's difficult. And then, like, we've got work and life separate and then yeah. we have to, like, juggle doing that. And we can't and... be bringing a dog to the studio and not bringing Tonka to the studio. That's just cruel. They yeah. can be together at home, two cats. Yep. But then if I get two cats and what if I get a dog later and I have two cats and a dog that's so many pets. So I guess probably not, but like the idea is always floating around. I would love around. to. I would love to. But also does Tonka even like animals? I feel like he only likes us. Oh, I love him. <laughs> Just in general, not because of that. I love Tonka so much. All right. Sorry. Next question. What are you and Rocket's favorite things about your new places? Ooh. Okay, so let's go to the apartment first, go. Okay, the apartment is just like a nice like... I, I actually don't mind the fact that it's fairly like kind of small. Mm. It's not like tiny, it's a it's a small it's two like bedroom apartment, but the living space is quite small. It's just comfortable and easy to clean. Yeah, and it has really good natural light. Yeah, so those are probably my favorite things. Yeah, I love those two things. I love obviously where we are because I love the inner west. Yeah, inner west is best. <laughs> yep. Um, but. <laughs> I love having it separate to the studio. Like it's actually been really good. There's been yeah. times where I've been really stressed or anxious in the studio and then I go home and it's just like a bit of relaxing and then mm. I can sleep better. Yeah. It's not just like the work is right there. I can just do it. You know what I mean? It's been better for like our work-life balance, I feel. Okay, now what about the studio, Rocky? I'm pretty in love with this place. So I don't know. There's there's like, there's so, there's so much. I, I even just like the way that we found it and then it evolved because when we found it it was just like bare bones mm. and then now it was it's not, not it's like, like these walls there was a hole here into rocket studio there was yeah. like it was just bricks very different that's really cool i love that i love that i have my own space that's just like so large mm. and i can just do anything in there I yeah can create anything that's awesome i love the I don't know. There's so much. I'm. I really don't have anything to complain about it. Honestly, every time we come in, I'm like, "What the hell? How do we have this?" I'm like, "This is crazy." Every time it's and it's been like two months. Yeah. It's crazy. I like appreciate it so much. Sometimes I just sit there and look at the ceiling, like the beams, and I'm like, "Wow, it's so cool." Yeah. Favorite thing, the amount of space I have. Yeah. For me, amount of space, just because like filming. Um, in the other space was difficult because I could only do it from certain angles because we had like our living stuff there. And on top of that, like having the tripods got in the way of my work. But now because the space is a lot bigger, I can set up filming stuff and it not be obstructive to the work I'm creating, which is really, really helpful. The other thing is the light in my studio is so nice. Sorry, I'm just gonna skip back to the space thing. I love having like separate stations for everything. My work is quite, quite chaotic in that it's a lot of different things all of the time. I might be working on a painting, but also need to do some computer work or send something off, which is over here. And then if we're doing the store stuff, it's not affecting my other work now. And that is really, really amazing. Like now when I want to work on iPad work, I'll work on the couch. When I want to do computer work, I'll work over here. When I work on a painting or making stuff, I'll work over there. And then whenever there's store stuff, it's over there. It means that I'm more productive. And I'm not saying that you have to have a big studio to be productive. It just makes it easier because things aren't in the way. Keep in mind, I remember working on magazine commissions on my living room floor, which is also my bedroom floor, which is also my kitchen floor because I lived in this tiny one room apartment, which was just like this room. <laughs> 
remember i can confidently say that was it was terrible but also at the time it was fine i saw one more if you want to answer it yeah, let's do it okay i think it's good to answer this because people always badger us about this hold on badger us about it yeah right. this person says i was wondering what you think about the concept of marriage just curious but if it's too personal please don't answer people always whenever i post anything about us they're like when are you getting married you need to marry each other and it's just like i'm not in a rush and we don't even know if we ever will. So don't get your hopes up. Sometimes I feel like it, sometimes I don't. And when I do feel like it, I'm like, is it societal pressure? And I will never marry anyone if I feel like it's societal pressure because just out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like the sentiment. I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I guess if I was super wealthy and didn't really care for like anything like that, then I'd just be like, I guess it's a party. Let's do it because like, you know. I do love you and I do want to spend my life mm. with you. So yeah, let's do this. Back to the question. I think the concept of marriage, I think it's like, it depends on what it means to the individuals. And I think Rocket's parents, you, your parents weren't married. So for you, it wasn't a thing. I think when I was little, I thought I would get married, but because like you're not super into marriage, you never saw it as for yourself. I don't see it for yeah. us. I don't feel like that doesn't mean we're not going to be together forever. Cause I really feel like we are. Yeah. Like I honestly feel like we are. And I feel like that is just something else on top. Where I, th where I think a lot of people do treat it like to have the forever they have to get married or something. Or they feel like it's yeah. like the, the passage to that point. Whereas I don't feel like that. I honestly don't know how people feel about marriage. So I'm just like stating my th like opinions. But I just feel like to us, like neither of us is religious or spiritual. So it's kind of like we're not pressed to do it. And our families aren't like you must get married. Although I think Nana was a tiny bit upset because she was like... Also, she like, was like, my Sean's against marriage. I was like, I'm not against it. I just the like marriage in in my mind doesn't doesn't make a relationship no. last longer. No. The only reason that it would is because of pressure, and that's the worst reason to stay together. Yeah, I was listening to this podcast called America This American Life, and Ira Glass is like, it's nice to have that and know that like blah blah blah, but you can get divorced. I don't know. I don't think it means the same to us as what it means to a lot of people that get married. Yeah. Like, probably one day, but we'll like, see. it wouldn't be some massive, ridiculous thing. I'm not having a party, and you know what? I'm eloping if we ever get married. I don't want to have a party, I don't want to yeah. be in the center of attention where everyone's like looking at you. Yeah, it's like a big, long singing happy birthday to you. <laughs> like, that's what it would feel like. I feel it's your, your nightmare. Yeah, well, thank you for having me, fellas. Yeah, I still have a few more questions. Oh, okay, well, I'll leave you to it then. <sighs> thank you, thanks for answering the questions with me. Do you experience such how do you get over imposter syndrome? I think I do experience it because like when I do talks that really like freaks me out. When I have to present myself, it scares me because I feel like I don't accurately present myself live. I feel like sometimes when I go to design talks, it's okay. But when I go to author talks, I feel like I'm like, why am I here? Like, I don't feel like I'm an author. Even though I have authored books, I feel like I'm like an illustrator that wrote the stories. Does that make sense? And I've said that before. I do experience it and I don't yet know how to get over it. I found that doing more of what makes you scared and makes you feel that makes it a bit easier but i still do feel like an imposter sometimes when i first started doing author talks i would compare, compare myself to how awesome like the authors that have been like um either like primary school teachers or like librarians are like because they're really good at dealing with kids and my strength is not necessarily public speaking so i need to realize that my strength is like visual stimulation and that means like things like illustration and like transitions and animation and stuff within the presentation and those people maybe aren't capable of doing that but I am so instead of focusing on things that they're good at and comparing myself to those things of course I can use them as like to guide myself to be better but like also just look at what your strengths are and use your strengths don't compare yourself to other people that would be my advice but I, I don't know how to get over that feeling yet so I don't really have good advice on that if you guys have good advice on any of these questions please like leave them below hey Sean I was wondering how have you remained consistent with your color palette and style of illustration for so many years doesn't this become restricted in any way what if you want to try something else do you always try to confirm to conform to the same style thanks i just make work that i like to look at so like those are the colors i like to look at that make me feel happy and make me feel calm and that's how i want people to feel when they look at my work which is why it's so easy to use those colors and if does this become restricting maybe but i think restrictions can make it easier to work with if i get an open brief like it's so much harder to get stuff done it's so much harder to make decisions because there's no restrictions at all like anything can happen and in illustration you can make anything when i have like a brief i find client work and like work with my store stuff so much easier because there's restrictions like 
what is the item that I'm designing for? What template do I need to work around? What specifications do I need to work around? What program do, do I need to use? Or how do I need to make this because of the output? Whereas if there's no restrictions whatsoever, it's like, oh my gosh. I wouldn't even call them boundaries because I just like to use them. But if they were boundaries, if I was like, I can only work in these colors, I think that makes it easier because you don't need to think about that aspect of things. You don't need to create something completely new every time. It's like there's a little piece of what you've done before in your work, which makes it really nice. And also makes it a nice little like journey to look at when you're looking at your body of work over time. I think that's all the questions. I hope I hope that was interesting. I know it's a, it was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I hope it was still enjoyable. I hope this video wasn't too long for you guys, although you guys say you like long videos, so maybe it's okay. I hope you like the new studio as much as me. I love it. I hope you like watching me work in the studio. I would say if I was going to plug anything, I would plug my TikTok because I've started making TikToks and it's really, really fun. I hope everyone's okay in lockdown, especially people that have just gone into lockdown in Australia and who's it's just been announced that we have to go into more lockdown, so it's kind of like, ugh. Also, I just started playing Minecraft. That's not really a plug, and that's not really anything you need to know, but how exciting. I don't know what else I'm saying, but I just don't want to let go yet because I'm not ready to say goodbye. <laughs> but I must. Goodbye. Farewell. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. I hope you had an amazing last week, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your life. <laughs> oh, I might be having a store drop soon, so keep your eyes on my Instagram stories and posts to see when that is because... There's limited supply of stuff and people often get disappointed and I'm not able to update you here as easily as I am there because like videos take a lot longer to make. If you're interested in that, please check out my Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. And if not, just continue and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Goodbye.